Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from GGCheckIt.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. This week's tutorial is sort of a continuation off of last week's tutorial. Uh, the reason being is that I want to demonstrate to you guys how you can take an existing effect that you've already done and convert it into something entirely different. And for those of you that don't really remember, uh, what we created last week looked like this. And it's very simple, very clean, very straightforward, just uh, you know, a simple gradient with some diagonals in the background. Now our goal is to take this uh, particular style and rework it to look like this. And as you can see, this sucker is very different. We've got some really cool text going on here with some like shattered metal going on. We've got like this crazy like textured background going on and some some noise, things of that sort. And just overall, the feeling is entirely different from the original. And that's the point that I'm trying to make. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do. So let's get to it, shall we? Now, uh, for this particular tutorial, since I have already showed you how to create the, the background and the, the gradient and the vignette, I'm not going to re-demonstrate how to do that because, you know, I already have. So, and if you don't know how to get to this point, just look at last week's tutorial. I'll give you a link in the description so that way you can uh, create the background, create the gradients, and also create the vignettes. Now, however, when you create the vignette, you'll want to notice that I've edited a few things about it to make it a little bit more intense. Uh, for starters, I changed the uh, the blending mode on this to color burn rather than soft light or overlay, and I've got the fill set to 42%. And of course, everything else is the same, you know, black to transparent, radial, angle of zero, 150% uh, scale, you know, pretty, you know, straightforward except for the, the color burn and the fill there. So anyway, the first thing that I want to add to this is the texture. And I want this texture to be between the gradient and the vignette. So I'm going to select the gradient. And I'm actually going to turn off the vignette for now because it's kind of bothering me. And um, I'm going to add in our texture, which is a texture from the Rust Pack 2 by Aquius, or Aqueous Sun. I have no idea how to pronounce that. And this is a free download off of Media Militia. So again, look in the description, go to those download links, and you'll be set to go. So I'm going to use texture number 27, and just click and drag this on in here to Photoshop. And I'm going to click and drag on one of the corners while holding the Alt or the Option key, depending on whether you're on a PC or a Mac. And I'm just going to make it about, uh, you know, yay big, just a little bit larger around the edges than the canvas here. And I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard to commit that transformation. And all I'm going to do with this texture here is set the blend mode to difference. And I'm going to put the fill percent down to, uh, let's do 62% here. And as you can see, we get some of these cool colors and, you know, particles and disgustingness here and there. But we're getting some really awkward, like, red and pinkish colors going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Adjustments panel. Let's add a Hue and Saturation Adjustment layer. And I'm going to change this from the Master to the Reds here. And I'm going to change the Hue to, uh, let's do 145. Let's change the Saturation to minus 39. And then we'll put up the Lightness to plus 34. So you can see that we're getting a little bit more green, but there's still some of these purple colors down in the bottom here. So what we'll do is turn on the vignettes, and you'll notice that that basically, you know, fixes all of that right then and there. So one thing to keep in mind, uh, depending on how much red you want to show up in the bottom here, uh, you'll want to edit the gradient appropriately. So I'll give this a double click. And you'll notice that I have the scale of this gradient set to 165. In last week's tutorial, I had you set that to like 225. And you'll notice that when it's that scale, there isn't really a whole lot of red to, to show for it. So simply just kind of, you know, put that down a little ways, uh, depending on how much red you want shown in the bottom. Maybe I'll put this up to like 180. 
so that way there's uh there's some red but not too much of it and let's uh let's hit okay there and let's select the uh media militia texture there and next in i want to start adding in the text now once again the the text that I'm going to be using here is a download from Media Militia simply because it's really cool and, you know, it's free, so why not use it, right? So what you're going to do is go to Media Militia and download this shattered font here. And, uh, you know, there's either the 3D version or the, the flattened version, if I remember correct. I'm just using the, uh, you know, the pre-created flattened version here because I'm just working with Photoshop. And so I'm just going to drag in the G, R, I, and the T all at once here. And, of course, I will hit enter for each letter. There we go. So we've got this uh, these jumbled up letters here. Let's go ahead and select all of the letters on the, uh, the layers panel and put that into a group by hitting Control or Command G. And I'll rename this group as uh, Grit. Can't see my keyboard with the mic in the way. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and open up this group and start rearranging the letters. So G, R, I, and T. And let's move the letter G off to the left. And let's move the R off to the left as well. And let's move the I over and the T over here. Okay. So right here, I want to rearrange the layers a little bit so that way they overlap in an interesting way. Uh, for example, I kind of want this bottom portion of the I to come in front of the R. So I'll just move the I layer above the R. There it goes. It's uh, right above right there. And let's, let's actually move the G in a little bit. Um, maybe I'll move the T out off to the side so that way you can tell it's uh, a different letter a little bit better. And that's looking pretty good, so let's select the entire group. Let's select the canvas by hitting Control or Command A. And assuming you've got your Move tool selected, let's go ahead and click the second and the fifth icons right here to make sure everything is centered nice and perfectly on our canvas. And let's hit Control or Command D to deselect the canvas. And we'll also hit Control or Command T to bring up the transform tool for all of the layers within the grit group. Now I'm going to go up to the top and click the chain link between the width and the height and then I'll type in um, let's do like 75 percent so that way it is uh, automatically scaled down 75 percent on the width and the height there and let's go ahead and hit the check mark to commit that transformation. So next up, I want to add in a curves adjustment layer to kind of tweak the, um, the contrasting on the text here. So let's go to our adjustments panel and let's add a curves adjustment layer. And you'll notice that it added this curves adjustment layer inside the grit group. And I don't want that, so I'm going to click and drag this up and above the group. And so now that it's outside the group, I want to clip this curves to the group. So to do that, I'm going to click this little box with a downwards pointing arrow. And so that way, this curves adjustment layer will only be applied to the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this top right hand corner here, and I'm going to bring this down a notch. And you'll notice that that kind of dulls down the, uh, the whites in the text here. And so next up, I'm going to add a point um, just a little bit before the right-hand side. I'm going to drag this up. Okay. And so next, I will add another point uh, kind of between the first and the second points. So somewhere here in the middle. And I'm going to click and drag this a little bit downwards below the, uh, the median line here. So maybe I'll drag this up a little bit more, drag that down just a touch, and just kind of mess with this a little bit. And you'll see that this is the overall effect that we're getting here. So the next thing that I want to do is apply a blend mode to all of these letters. So I'm going to select the grit group. Man, that just that just feels weird saying, doesn't it? Grit group. Ah. Anyway, uh, so with the grit group selected, go to uh, the, the blend mode here and change that from pass through to hard light. And so now we are getting this, uh, this interesting effect where you can see some of those lines in the background kind of showing through the text. Looks pretty cool. And next up, uh, again with the group still selected, I'm going to go to Effects and add a drop shadow to the entire group. 
And for this, I'm going to set the blend mode to, let's use soft light here. And let's put the opacity all the way up to 100%. And let's just increase the size and the spread to something that looks pretty decent. That doesn't look too bad. So I've got the spread at 22 and the size at 65. And let's hit OK. And I kind of want to bring back some of the red color that is in the original text here. So uh, just let me show you what I'm talking about. If you go to the original text, and I'll double click one of these, you'll see that the original coloring of this was a red color. But since we've got the hue and saturation applied, it's making the text green. So in order to, you know, uh, make this back into like a red color in certain places, we're going to edit the mask. So select the mask for the hue and the saturation layer. Let's go to our brush tool by hitting the letter B. And let's tone down the opacity of the brush to uh, somewhere between 20 and 30%. And, uh, you know, make sure you have your foreground color set to black. And let's zoom on in and just start painting in on those random areas that you want to show in uh, that red there. So I'm going to add in some red kind of onto the, the top edge here. And maybe I'll add in some more red here onto the bottom. Uh, somewhere in there. Makes it a little bit more interesting. Maybe the top portion of this. Okay. And let's also, you know, add it to this top edge up here. And, and of course, keep in mind that you'll have to click multiple times in order to uh, increase that intensity there because you know we've lowered the opacity on the brush. Hey, a car just drove by. Interesting. I wonder if you guys heard that. I have my window open because it's kind of hot out right now. Or sorry, not hot out, hot inside the room because you know I've got this beastly computer running and it's uh and it puts out a lot of heat. So have to open the window to help that dissipate a little bit. Kind of sad. So anyway, I'm just kind of working my way through, adding in these random uh, splotches of red to places of interest. Um, I'm almost done here. I'm going to finish up the R. The I isn't really too difficult because there's a lot of uh, shattered parts all over the place. So I can try and add in some red on there, but it really doesn't show up. Uh, so a little more here and there. Maybe I should try and speed this up so that way I'm not you know, completely wasting your guys' time or anything. All right, let's just uh, go through the T real quick. Add some some red shades here and there. Boom, boom. And let's also add, you know, like one of these bars as a as a stroke of red. Make it kind of cool looking. Sweet. So uh, I've went ahead and finished adding in, you know, those little red splotches here and there. I wasn't really, uh, uh, you know keeping in mind what looks good or anything like that. I was just kind of throwing it in randomly just to see how it looked. Obviously, you would throw a little bit more of your own time into that to make it look a little prettier, I suppose. But uh, anyway, we're almost done. We just want to add in a little bit of noise to the overall image here. So let's click on the vignette layer and create a new layer above it. And I'll call this noise. And I'm just going to fill this in with my foreground color by hitting Alt Backspace or Option Delete if you're on a Mac. And let's go to Filter, let's go to Render, and add some clouds in. And of course, make sure that your foreground and background color are white before you do that. I almost forgot to mention that. My bad. And now let's go back to Filter. Let's go to Noise and add in some noise. Uh, for this, you can do just about whatever you want, but the settings that I use are an amount of 65% with the uh, distribution set to Uniform and Monochromatic check marks. And with that, we'll hit OK. And I'm going to set the blend mode to, uh, let's do overlay here. And I'm going to tone down the fill to maybe, let's try 55%. That's actually looking pretty good. So that's uh, about all there is to it, really. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. All right. So um, just with a, a few things from Media Militia and, you know, a couple you know, hints and twists of our own, we were able to recreate that existing effect as something completely different. And if I do say so myself, this looks pretty freaking cool. 
So uh, hopefully uh, you guys learned something pretty neat from this, and maybe you will want to go back to some of the effects you've already done and maybe tweak them, recreate them, you know, just do something different. It makes things a little bit more interesting, and I don't even know what the heck I'm saying anymore. I, it's just late. I'm ready to, to, to get off for the night, you know, watch some of The Office, and, uh, you know, just call it a day. So once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and I will see you next Tuesday. Peace out.